I congratulate Suzanne Bonamici for becoming our next congresswoman representing the 1st District. We have a uh, very fine person in Suzanne who will represent us, and I certainly put my confidence in her and hope that you will join me in supporting her and encouraging her to, uh, to represent us well, the entire district, and to, uh, to make us proud back in Washington, D.C. I hope you'll join me in congratulating her at this time. You bet. living proof that anybody can run for Congress, <laughs> but to run an effective and a well-respected campaign, you have to have fantastic staff and volunteers, and I do. <laughs> Each of you in this room have contributed to uh, a very robust and I think a very worthwhile campaign, and I thank you. I especially want to thank uh, those who, who gave so much of their personal time, hundreds of hours they volunteered to our campaign to try to get this message out, to try to convince Oregonians that, that there, there was a better way. And so I, I can never tell you enough how much we appreciate your efforts, your sacrifices, and your trust. I also want to thank uh, my fantastic staff, starting with our campaign manager, Mary Ann Ostrom, who really made us proud and, and every day kept the uh, trains running on time and is a true professional. Thank you, Mary Ann. <laughs> Mary Ann was joined by a very capable and able body of staff, Mike Carew, Dan Peck, Brian Jones, Tiffany Stark, Ravenhorst, Devin Kahn, Brittany Baker, Link, Katie Osborne, also our three interns, Eric, Sean, and Stephanie, and, uh, and I thank them again for everything that they've done to help us. But obviously, uh, a candidate cannot get up every day and do what's necessary, and they can't come home every night and feel as though they have a home again that's unlocked, waiting for their re-entry, <laughs> without a supportive family. And the family that I have standing behind me, my wife Allison, my sons Austin, Brennan, and Chad, I love them dearly, and I'm so grateful for everything they've done for me, and frankly for you as well, in allowing me to represent you during this campaign. wondering, I'm disappointed. I was hopeful going in that we'd be able to reason with the voters and show them a better way to create jobs here in our state and in our country. Along the way, perhaps I should mention the biggest disappointment is that those who opposed me found it necessary to try and undo all the good that small businesses like mine accomplish in our state. My wife and I have joyfully employed 60 people and helped hundreds more launch profitable careers around the country. We've welcomed discouraged job seekers into our door and after a little bit of time of training them and introducing them to industry, we've seen them leave with the joy and self-worth that a new job brings. But voters, unfortunately, got a different story about the work that I do and again, I'm saddened by that. Not just for me, but for small businesses that are doing the very thing we need more of in this state, taking risks, investing, and giving people a better future. Do people like me in small businesses make honest mistakes? Of course we do. Regardless, since small businesses employ 70% of our country's workforce, we need to do more to help them to be successful so that they can start hiring again. That means simplifying the tax code, and getting rid of unreasonable regulations and government mandates. Oh, if you don't 
do this, we'll see continued unemployment numbers that leave Americans without hope and our kids without true opportunities. Another matter that must be addressed tonight, and I hope you'll forgive me, divisive language wasn't limited just to the topic of my well-regarded business. Over the course of this campaign, those who adamantly opposed me tried to paint me as someone who does not stand up for or support women. In my personal life, in my professional life, in the charities I choose to volunteer for, in the people I have hired over the years, I have always stood up for women, and particularly women who have fallen on hard times. Anyone who convinced you otherwise has misled you. importantly, if you'll allow me, I'd like to turn my attention to those whose future we should be most concerned about tonight. I'd like to talk to the kids who are here and who are watching on television. A lot of people, old and young, say that they don't like politics. They say that uh, it's just a bunch of adults yelling at each other and trying to make the other person look bad. <laughs> well, whether it's right or wrong, adults do get pretty excited when they feel deeply about something or when they think someone else's opinion is wrong or hurtful to the rest of us. Someday, young people, maybe you'll feel strongly enough about something that you'll do all you can, whether as a candidate or a volunteer, to make sure others either do something or don't do something to make your town, your state, or your country better. That's what I did. I never thought I'd run for the U.S. Congress. But when others weren't acting responsibly or were just behaving badly, my wife and I decided to leave the activities of our business and our private life and spend our time persuading others that there is a better way. So young people, you need to know this. Though I lost an election tonight, I'm still committed to doing all I can to convince adults that we need to make you our first priority. as a young person if you went to a restaurant with all your relatives and after the meal concluded your grandparents your aunts and uncles your even your mom and dad told the waiter or waitress to give you the bill <laughs> and then they said to you we'll be out in the car well that's what will happen that's what's going to happen in real life if we grown-ups don't start making some tough decisions that's why I decided to run for Congress that's why politics is important. Whether or not you want to keep away from politics, politics will not stay away from you. So young people, I encourage you to be aware. Follow what's happening. Ask a lot of questions. We adults have work together, and we have to do work together to fix this fix we're in. And though you can't vote for the people in Congress, I hope they'll be voting for you. When I was young, growing up in Tigard and Newburgh, I was inspired by the examples of two great Oregon Republican leaders, Mark Hatfield and Vic Atiyah. While we lost Senator Hatfield last year, I'm honored to call Governor Tia a friend and a mentor. He couldn't be with us tonight, but I know he's watching tonight on television. While I may never be in their class, I can still do my best to emulate their examples of compassion, creativity and courage. Young people, find someone that you admire, watch them, and do your best to act as they act. And in closing, I hope our new Congresswoman will represent this entire district. If her experience was like mine, this campaign taught her that Oregonians are tired of the games in Washington, tired of the tone deafness of our, to our problems, and fed up with broken promises, or a Congress that continues to make promises they simply can't keep. For those who voted for me, thank you. Thank you so much for taking a chance on a small business owner from Tualatin. God, that's <laughs> this case.
campaign is over, I hope we'll put aside the term opponent and see each other as neighbors, as fellow Oregonians, partners in trying to do our best for our state, ourselves, and our children. If we don't abide by this uniquely American principle, how can we ever expect our elected leaders to do so? So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for being here tonight. I thank you for all that you've done to help us in this campaign. I look forward to standing shoulder to shoulder with you in making this truly a better place to live. Thank you. God bless each of you. And may God continue to bless these United States of America.